Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new video! In today's video, by one of my viewers' request, we're gonna check a more in-depth approach on how we can randomize loots inside treasure chests inside our games. So, well, let's get started. So, over the years, the best approach that I've found in order to randomize loot inside treasure chest has always been to never implement it directly on the event itself, but rather through common events. The only exception to that rule is if a specific treasure chest has to contain and give a specific item, in which case I would also implement it inside the event. But other than that, Whenever a character opens a treasure chest, it shall always refer to a common event. Always. So that's what we're going to do today. So we're going to create a little chest over here. Going to go inside our common events. And let's go with... Um, what I like to do is chest kind of tab. More like uh, in order to find myself a bit easier inside common events. Because at some point there's going to be just so many. So we're going to have... Uh, let's go with regular quality chest for today's video. Sometimes what I like to do for some projects is have like poor quality, high quality, and so I will adjust the uh, logic inside the content based on what the type of chest the player opens. So really up to you how you want to go by this route, but to keep it simple today, we're just going to go with Frigger quality chest. All right. We're also going to need inside our game manager a brand new variable. Now, this variable is going to dictate the type of loot that the character can access at this point inside the story. It's usually referred to by the average party level of the players uh, inside the group. So the higher level the characters are, the more likely you're, gon you're going to encounter uh, better quality loots and whatnot. What we're going to do is, it's not really inside the heroes in formation, it's more like inside the groups in formation, which I don't have any tab for, and I feel like we're going to start to need it. So let's go with party in formation entirely, since it's not only for the heroes loot, but the whole party average level. So the whole party goes inside the party in formation. Alright, so what I'm going to do is, we're going to create the party average level variable that I already did before registering that video. And what we're going to do essentially is we're going to set the constant to zero. And the best, actually, best approach to do this will actually be to create uh, itself a common event that I will uh, call get average party level. Because it's going to have a lot of logic, which is just going to waste a lot of space inside a game manager that I don't necessarily want to see in there. So what I'm going to do is that logic is going to go inside the get average party level. And what we're going to do inside party information is that we're simply going to call that common event itself, that average party level. So basically on a parallel loop, we're going to call everything that's going to be found in this. That allows us to keep the game manager a little bit cleaner, which we'll definitely need. So the way I usually proceed is that I'm going to add a conditional branch that says that if the character is inside the party, so if read is inside the party, then what I'm going to do is that my control variable party average level it's going to be had the game data of the actor read level so we're going to add this and we're going to essentially do this by uh, for each and every single possible uh, character that can be inside the party throughout the game so level of Priscilla it's going to be had and so on and so forth so i'm not going to do all of eight of them i'm just going to show you exactly how i do it now essentially once you added all the possible values, then in order to get the average, if you went to scroll in your life, I hope you did, uh, the way you're going to do it is divide by the amount of people that is inside the party. So I think that this can be party members in hindsight others. You're going to divide by the amount of party members. And there you go. Now you, uh, the party average level contains the average level of all your party's uh, characters, players. And that variable is going to be used in order to determine a little bit more uh, what is the child of loot that our character is going to find. All right, so moving on with the loot itself inside the regular quality chest. So the first really loot that we're going to find is gold. So what I'm going to do is, once again, I new common event. And the reason why I do so many common events really is only to make things a lot cleaner. 
like you'll see that inside a common event you call another common event and that is uh, a concept that you'll learn inside uh, more in-depth programming that uh, the more the more cleaner your common events are it's actually called functions inside programming but whatever the cleaner and the easier they are to read doesn't matter if you have like 500 of them because if for instance the gold reward should not be called gold input like what, what the gold reward is going to do is that it's going to reward gold to the players and so when it's gold reward has been called over here it's easy to understand that oh okay so this is the part that actually takes care of rewarding the gold to the characters then we could have like item rewards weapon rewards and so on and so forth so that way it allows you to keep your common events a lot more cleaner easier to follow and to keep track of exactly what is happening rather than having 500 lines of content in which you're just looking for uh, all day all night to try to figure out what the hell is going on with your bug by doing this it keeps things a lot cleaner so sorry for my renting it's just super important that you understand that part uh okay so right now what we're gonna do is basically once we open the chest we got quality chest we're gonna call the gold reward item reward and let's go with weapon reward all right and of course, the regular quality control chest common event is going to be called when we open the chest. All right. Now, for the gold reward, what we're going to do essentially is, and that is really where your uh, game designing principles will come in handy over here, because it's really up to you on how many gold you want to attribute it by a chest based on the character's party level. So I'm just going to keep it very straightforward. Uh, here but keep in mind that the values of the gold is not necessarily a good idea it's just to show you how you can do it at home now uh, what i'm going to do is the party average level is smaller or equal to 10 going to make a couple else branches in there so boom else 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 all right so smaller or equal to 20 30 40 all right so and then this over here will be 50 obviously so let's give it as 50 so if it's below 50 what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a new variable which is gonna be a random value that we're gonna use only for randomizing uh, numbers purposes so random value and we're also gonna need random percentages which we'll see a little bit later so a random value is going to be somewhere random so whatever you feel appropriated as gold reward for the characters be uh, below level 10 so i'm going to give a random between 1 and 50 and for level 20 and below then it would be uh 51 and how 100 and so on so forth let me fast forward this all right now what we're going to do is we're going to attribute the gold to our characters and we're not going to do it inside the conditional branches but rather at the very end of the common event now the reason to that is because we know that they're going to receive gold at some point we just don't know the value the value is determined by the party the party average level but there's no point to put it inside every single condition like this because at some point there's like doesn't matter which condition is going to go through they're going to get some gold so we might as well just put it once at the very end. It's going to optimize the code and make the game run a little bit faster because of this. And also we don't have to spam uh, copy pasting all, all, the, all the way through just for attributing some gold. And we're of course going to show uh, the text. So you received uh, a variable random value, which I don't recall the ID. Let's just put 51 right now. Receive. There we go. And the value is 34 actually. All right. So we give them the gold, we pop up the messages that receive that uh, amount of gold, and of course the gold reward is called over here, which is called when we open the chest. So if we just test that part, we should receive a uh, random amount of gold. Now, since this is a test map, I'm also going to need a parallel process that's going to trigger my uh, game manager. So variable, no, sorry, switch. This game started. On. there we go all right so let's test this technically if i open the chest i receive 27 gold great 
now uh, if I do some duplicates, I'm going to test at the very hand uh, how it goes. But now let's go back to our items reward. Now, the thing is with the items and the weapons that we're going to attribute, uh, sometimes you might want to attribute more than one item by chest. It makes sense. Like sometimes it will get like two potions. Sometimes they will receive, uh, I don't know, uh, like a mana potion and a health potion. Sometimes they will receive uh, gems or whatever. I, I really don't care what they got yet, but sometimes they could receive multiple uh times the same item or different item and we're gonna have to code this over here now once again the way that you're gonna handle this data table like uh, how many i what are the hearts that they get the um that many items based on the level or the items quality all those variables are up to you to decide i'm just once again show you how you can do it uh, the best way to actually implement this so what we're gonna do is we're gonna first set the random percentage the variable that we created I, I like to use the value between 0 and 99 and depending like if it's extremely rare or not what they got so let's say if the variable uh, random percentage is smaller or equal to 5 and else if it's not then if it's smaller than equal to 5 they get two items if it's not then gonna get one item now for the purpose of this video let's go with 50 so that I'll be able to show you a couple of examples how it's gonna work so now we know that in this case here, we're going to attribute two items. So um, items to attribute. Through chest. All right, items to give through chest uh, is going to be set to the constant two. Otherwise, it's going to be set to the constant one. And you could also like have it's the value is bigger than 90, then uh, it's not going to give any items at all. The chest only contain gold or didn't contain any item or whatever. It's really up to you, like I said earlier. Now, uh, now we have the amount of items we want to give. The, uh, the next thing we're going to need to do is, uh, well, first, I like to input comments because otherwise it's harder to keep track. So determine amount items give. And also gonna do the exact same thing here. It's more like uh, what items to give. All right. And now once again, depending on the average party level, so depending on what level they are, if that's the way you want to go, that's the way I like to go inside my games. If it's be smaller or equal to ten, else, then if it's smaller or equal to ten, we're also gonna ru run a. Um, Random number, so random value is going to be somewhere between 0 and 5. Now, depending on uh, the random number that I'm going to get, this will determine the item that I'm going to give. So, for instance, 0 will be a potion, 1 will be a super potion, 2 will be a full potion, so on and so forth. So, let me just fast forward this part. And finally, what we're going to do is we're going to change the item, of course. So for value zero it's going to increase by the variable which is items to give to chest so in this case that will be uh, two potions or one potion depending on the first variable id whoops just realized i did a mistake it's not first variable it's random percentage good so we roll a random percentage that determines how many items to give and then we run a random value to determine which item we're going to give uh, the amount of so in this case, it could be one or two potions. You could also create a loop if you wanted so that uh, the character could get multiple times like the, the items reward. So inside the quality reader quality chest, we could have a condition like run again a variable here, random value between one and two. And depending if it's one or two, then we're going to roll uh, we're gonna call the items reward once or twice and that will determine like how many i like so that event could be called multiple times so a character could get multiple different items uh throughout the chest that's also a possibility we're not gonna go through there but it's definitely something which uh, you can do if you'd like now uh we change the items to div let me fast forward this part awesome and finally we're gonna have to change the messages so you got uh, variable something uh, potion and my variable is actually uh, items to gift chest which is variable id 36 and so it's going to tell me uh, how many potion i got 
you could also have the condition if the value is only one then it's gonna write one otherwise it's gonna be a per roll to potions if you're into that kind of details like i am but uh, i want to keep things simple for you it's just to give you the, the rough offset on it rough idea how you can implement this inside your game so potions then we're gonna change this for super potions so let me, and we do this for each one each one of the items in here all right so we're done configuring the item rewards uh of course if you have more items you should go more in depth and depending on the average party level you could give out like more options or possibly to give more items or whatever like i said it's really up to you how you want to implement this for your game design just giving you the core idea how to do this now let's go and test this so save launch and basically we're gonna open the first chest 32 gold and we got two dispel herbs Open the seven chest, which once again calls the same common event. Four gold and one potion. And once again, 12 gold and two potions. And that's it, really. That's how you can implement a core system to randomize a lot and customize the way that your random loose are provided through characters throughout the game. Uh, I use it throughout the uh, levels. You can use different types of parameters to change the logic variable behind of this, all of this. But at least now you have the good and decent core idea on how to do it properly. Okay, so that's already it for today's video. Make sure to like. If you have any questions or comments about this, please make sure to leave them below inside the comment section. If you have any requests for me to make special video tutorials uh, of something you have questions about, leave them below inside the comment section as well. And as always, make sure to subscribe for more content, and I'll see you later for a new video. Bye! Goodbye!